Hey guys, so today I'm going to be filming a video on all about how I got into the college that I'm attending. So I basically haven't updated you guys in like a really hot minute. So basically I just want to update you guys on how I got into UC San Diego. That's the school I'm going to. It's not SDSU or University of San Diego, it's UC San Diego. So yeah, um, I'm just going to be telling you guys like all the tea, my GPA, um, SAT score, AP scores, extracurriculars. Um, I'm not going to be reading my essays just because they're long and I don't like want to just read them verbatim. So um, I will like link them down below though. Um, looking back on them, I don't know if they're that good. They don't, I don't know if they have too much substance, but I also don't think that they were too bad. Also, like I said, I haven't really updated you guys in a hot minute, but today is September 13th. It's a Thursday, and exactly one week from now, next Thursday, I'm going to be moving into college. I'll be daily vlogging, talking about like college finances, and just giving advice to you guys who are going through the process right now. So yeah, um, this video is going to be super detailed just because this is not something to fool around with. This is college admissions. Um, you just, you need to get it done. So I'm going to be telling you guys all the details and stuff like that. So basically the number one thing that colleges are going to look at, and this sucks, there really is no formula to get into college, but to have a chance though, especially at the UC schools that are very um, stats heavy, you are going to need a high GPA and a somewhat okay SAT score. I think in this day and age, I'm not, an admission, I'm not an admissions counselor, but I think it's safe to say that the GPA is worth a lot more than the SAT score just because the GPA is a reflection of how hard you work, your determination, um, like you as a person. The SAT is not as reliable as the GPA because it's very inconsistent. It's a one-time test, whereas a GPA is like accumulation of like years and years of hard work and so many tests the SAT just isn't reliable because your social economic status affects it like if you don't have money to be able to afford to take SAT classes your score might not be as high so the SAT just it's kind of it's not as important um, in terms of GPA though that is really important make sure your GPA is solid my school GPA was a 4.5 by the time I applied or it was a little higher than that and then my UC GPA, because they recalculate it, was a 4.2. So by the end of senior year, I had taken nine AP classes. But at the time that I had applied, I only took five AP classes. And then I forgot to say my SAT score, but my SAT score was a 1340. I got a 680 on the English section, and then I got a 660 on the math section. I took it one time just because I took it hella late. I took it like at the beginning of senior year. I was over the SAT and I was totally okay with my SAT score. It's obviously not like a 1400, but I was okay with it. Also, another thing I want to touch on is that the number one thing when you are applying to college is that UC schools especially, I'm not talking about private schools, but UC schools, the only people that you can compare yourself to is the people at your school because when you apply to a UC school, you're not being compared to like the whole entire state. like. If you go to a certain school in this district, you're not going to be compared to a different district. You are just being compared to your district. So if your average um, SAT score for your district is only like a 1050 and you get a 1300, it looks really, really good. Even though the average SAT score for UCLA might, might be like a 1400. I know for UCSD, the average SAT is 1410. I got a 1340. Um... So I was 70 points below UCSD's average, but the thing is, is I'm not being compared to the whole entire pool. I'm being compared to my district, and my district's average is like 1100. Don't sweat the average SAT and the average GPA because you can, you're only like responsible for what you have. And if you're like very above average for your district and for your school, you're in a very good position. Um, they don't look at ranking. But somewhere in your um, UC application, I would try to mention ranking. I was ranked in the top, um, I think it was 2 or 3% of my grade. And I best believe I mentioned that because the UCs, like I said, they care about the context. In your context, if you're in the top like 1% or 5%, that looks really, really, really good. 
Um, so yeah, I would definitely try to mention that. For me, um, I was an honor guard, which is the top 40 students. We have like about 850 in our grade, so I mentioned that. I was like, I wrote it, I was like, honor guard for awards, top 40 students out of 850, like, invited to walk-in graduation, meaning I had this GPA. Like, you really need to kind of sell yourself and you need to be very uh, factual and st statistical, I guess. So, yeah, that's definitely something I did. I'm going to actually pull up my application right now so that I could read directly from it. But um, basically the process is, is you choose like, all of the campuses you are applying to. I applied to six in total. I applied to UC Berkeley. I applied to UC Davis, uh, UC Irvine, UC Santa Barbara, UC San Diego, and oh, and UCLA. I don't know if I mentioned that. Uh, I'll just quickly say my results for everything. So yeah, I wasn't really planning to reveal it in this video, but whatever. So basically, um, I got rejected from UC Berkeley. That one really hurt. Um, not that I thought I was going to get into Berkeley. It's just that after I, which is, which brings me into my next point, I got waitlisted at UCLA. I was beyond shocked. Honestly, I have no idea how that happened, but because I got waitlisted at UCLA, I thought I would like maybe get waitlisted at Berkeley or get in. So yeah, but I got rejected from Berkeley, waitlisted from UCLA. I got, um, into UC Davis, that was my first acceptance. I got rejected from UC Irvine, which I was honestly kind of confused about. Not that I think that it was a guarantee, it's just that like last year, UC Irvine took over 100 students from our like graduating class and it was just like really easy to get in. So that was kind of my safety school. I didn't apply to any safeties and I thought UC Irvine was my safety school, but I got rejected from it, but it was all good because yeah, it was, it was fine. Into UC San Diego, and then I also got into UC Santa Barbara. UC Santa Barbara has been my dream school since I was in middle school, so I really wanted to go there, but I ultimately decided on UC San Diego. Another piece of advice I have is to not apply to impacted majors, because for real, if you do want to go, I know UCLA doesn't admit by major, but I know UCSD admits by major. I know engineering and biology are impacted. So what I would do is I would apply for like an easier major, something you're like vaguely interested in that's not impacted. I would apply for that major and then switch into the impacted major because if you apply for an impacted major, you already have a lesser chance of getting in. So I would apply for like the easier major to get into. So at least you could just get into the school. And then after you get in, then you could like switch majors. Um, okay, so basically for my grades, um, they asked for your freshman year grades. It's not calculated in your GPA though. But for ninth grade, I basically just got straight A's in three honors classes. And then 10th grade was my worst year of grades. I was taking two honors and two APs, and I got three Bs that year. Two of them were from AP Bio, and one of them was from Honors English. And then 11th grade, I was taking three APs and one Honors. Um, I got straight A's the second semester, and then the first semester I got a B in Honors Pre-Calc. That class was freaking difficult. It was really hard. And then, yeah. So for my extracurriculars, I already went over this in my junior year advice video, so I don't really feel the need to go over it again, but um, I'll just give you like an example of a description I wrote. So for, um, so for Spanish National Honor Society, this is the description I wrote. I think the description is really important because it's your chance to kind of highlight all the stuff that you've done for the club, and it's your chance to show like the meaningful contributions that you've added to your club and like your campus culture. I wrote, as co-president of Spanish National Honor Society, I run weekly peer and preschool tutoring sessions and have also pioneered a scholarship for low-income students. That's like very factual and it's to the point. And then for the UC questions, they give you eight questions you need to answer four. Um, I have to say this right now, it does not matter what questions you choose. I was out here trying to be strategic, picking like certain questions and all of that, but it really doesn't matter. And for a little bit, I personally was really worried. I was scared that I wasn't going to get into any colleges because I didn't talk about any difficulties and I didn't talk about any hardships I've gone through. And 
That's not to say that I haven't gone through any hardships, but I am aware that my life hasn't been nearly as difficult as other people. I know some people for their hardships, they were like, oh, my biggest hardship was AP Chem. Some people in my grade did write about that. I felt like that was kind of like disrespectful to the people who actually have gone through like real hardships and I didn't want to just write like a frivolous essay. So yeah, I know that I personally was really worried that I wouldn't get into college because of that because I know these days um, college admissions like are really trying to um, like diversify everything and hardships are always like a plus because it it's shown that you've like overcome something and I think that's a really good thing that's happening actually. So basically I'll just tell you guys the questions I answered. I answered the every person has a creative side. That's where I talked about YouTube. That was my creative side. Then I answered the uh, describe an example of your leadership experience. I just talked about uh, Spanish National Honor Society and like how we created a scholarship. What do you believe makes you stand out as a strong applicant? And basically for this one, I kind of talked about how I like a lot of different things, how I like art history and philosophy, but I also like business and YouTube and I just entrepreneurship and art and like I just basically talked about how I like everything and how I think that like makes me stand out. And my favorite essay that I wrote about was think about an academic subject that inspires you. So for that one, I just talked about art history. This one was really easy for me to talk about just because, and this was the first one I wrote, just because um, art history inspires me, but it's not so much the subject that inspires me as it was the teacher I had. I had like the most like amazing art history teacher ever and he basically changed my life, so it was very easy to write that essay. I guess those are all of my tips. Um, yeah, I just, I try to work hard in high school. I don't think GPA is everything, but I do think it's like kind of there. You kind of need it to kind of have like a shot at getting into college, but yeah, I kind of just want to reiterate the fact that everybody's story is different. Everybody's upbringing is different. Everybody's personality is different and the way we all think is different so don't think that one way is like a shoe in to get in I had no idea what schools I would get into it was like totally random and yeah so stats aren't everything I wish you guys the best of luck and if you would like me to edit any of your essays or just offer like any advice that's like personally tailored to you you can always reach out to me and I will definitely get back to you. So yeah, hopefully this video helped and I hope you guys have an amazing day. Bye.